And we are back. Bears franchise. And in the last episode, we we beat the Packers. Surprisingly. 16-7. to seven. Um, And... Oh, hold on. Tucker. Gaffney. I, I already, I've already done this, but I did this uh, off camera, but uh, we're just going to get straight into it, really. There's nothing to really talk about besides we need to win out, and then we also need some teams to lose out. We're gonna blitz counter. We're playing against Roquan Smith, former player on our team. Very interesting to see how it goes. And Matthew Adams is going to miss today's game with turf toe. That is definitely a setback, but that's really it. I mean, I hope we can uh, recover from it. And then we're we're healthy on the offense, so you have some players to upgrade. Requan Bisker, you're the only one, so we'll upgrade you. Give you zone. That puts you up to an eighty overall without morale. And Sterling Leverford is going to get the start. I am comfortable with that. Matthew Adams is only going to be out for this week, so we dodge a bullet there. But without further ado, uh, let's get into it. Something big for us is uh, the Eagles are a very tough team for us. Not necessarily that, but you look at the playoff picture, they're the two seed. Pretty good. The seven seed are the Rams, who have six losses. They're third, so they're eight and six. We need a lot of luck going into this week. We need, you know, to win. We probably need some teams to lose out as well. It's just not a very... Uh, I don't know how to say. Likely. We, you know, are in a very bad situation. And the last three teams we're playing all have winning records. So, we're going to get into this game. Hopefully, we can keep our playoff hopes alive. But I don't think that's going to happen. Not... I, I feel like we could pull the win here. I honestly think we're going to finish this season 8-9, and nine, and I think our final loss is going to be Week 18 to the Falcons. But I just don't think we're going to get the luck with teams we need to lose. To lose. We have a great uh, scenario if we win today's game because a lot of the teams who are ahead of us play each other. So, you know, they're... Assuming there's no tie, uh, would at least move us up a bit, but that's still, you know, we need two more weeks of luck. 
it's not out of the question, but I'm saying we're probably... That's a great start right there. That is Sean Murphy bunting on the interception. Like, the Vikings and Packers. One of them I have to lose. Just an overthrow by uh, McDowell. And, well, I feel like that was some copyright music there. And I also am not able to skip anything, so... Guess we're stuck here for the long run. So far here is Tyler Huntley. Satch, pretty impressive. Has started two games. Now I believe he's come in for another two games after, you know, Fields got benched for those games. He hasn't looked horrible. He's very careful with the ball, which is very, gives me very mixed feelings about. Miles Sanders is going to be out for this game. That's the only player missing. He will be back for the playoffs, and the Eagles more than likely are going to make it. So the thing with Huntley and Fields, you know, the difference between the two, Huntley is very careful with the ball. You know, doesn't throw as many interceptions as Fields did, obviously. He only has one interception through, we'll say, three games total because he's probably started a half in two games. And Fields through all the games he started this season. I don't know exactly how much, and we get a touchdown to Cole Komet. Fields had 18 interceptions through, I want to say, 11 weeks, and he only had 10 touchdowns, so he had less than one touchdown per game. So... Obviously, Huntley is going to be the answer moving forward, it feels like. Maybe Fields earns his job back next season in a preseason competition, but I don't see that being likely. It's going to be a handoff that's going to go nowhere. It's going to lose three yards. Great job by the defense there. Gonna go back to him, and this one gets about a yard, yard and a half back. And now a third and 12 from their own 20. McDowell is going to throw. Has time, he's gonna go deep. And that's going to be incomplete, but I believe there's going to be pass interference called on Sean Murphy Bunton. And there is. And Landon Dickerson also gets injured on that play. Now that puts them at across my field to the 45, first and 10. And that play goes nowhere as well, losing two yards. A key thing in that uh, Packers-Vikings game is if the Packers win that game, they win the division. That's a key thing. So... Who is 10? Is that not Matthew Adams? That's Don. Why do I always think Matthew Adams wears 10? It's Donovan Wilson. I don't know why. That was a great play. First and goal now from the five yard line. And it is going to be a run. They're going to get two. That's Trey Sermon on the carry. Guessing that's their power back. Second and goal now from the three yard line. It's going to be a toss outside. Playing it very well. And Sermon's going to lose a yard, and that brings up third and goal now from the four-yard line. Very interesting defense. I think there will probably be someone open immediately on this play. There wasn't. And Travante McDowell gets sacked by al Dean Muhammad. And the Vikings take a 7-0 lead over the Packers. 
I'm very mixed feelings about that Packers Vikings game because if you want me to be straight honest, I think our best chance of making the playoffs percentage wise probably is winning the division, but I think more likely will be sneaking in at the wild card, probably at the seven seed. So in Minnesota Oh jeez, the kicker is injured. That is not good. It's fine though because it seemed to be an arm injury that is, you know, playable. That'll be huge for us. Montgomery gets a huge game because it, you know, the kicker has to sit out. That means they're probably gonna have to, you know, they're gonna struggle with uh, extra points and field goals. So they're really gonna have to go for touchdowns. That's a toss to, I believe, Darren Moody, who he gets a good game. Like right, another huge game, Rams are the seven seed, 49ers so I believe are the three seed. That's another huge game because loser of that game is probably going to drop out of the playoff picture. And a huge fumble. That was an actual fumble too. Just to be clear, I think it was Montgomery ultimately breaks that tackle. That ball is well out. And we can't be doing that. I think one of the big things for us is going to be having our defense off of the field as much as possible. That's the thing with our defense. I am confident in our defense. The issue is, I do not want them to get tired early on in the game because that would mean it's easier for the offense, you know, spread up that defense. Especially now that we gave them field position on like their own 45, that's not a great start either. The screen pass is incomplete. And by the way, Green Bay did tie uh, with Minnesota at 7 there. And the punter, that's not the kicker. That's a great punt down at the 9. Punted it to where it would be pinned, and you know, it wouldn't have been returned. That's a great play there. We're probably going to see the last play of the first quarter here. This game is actually stupid. What the heck? We're going to see the last play of the first quarter. Okay, game, you proved me wrong. That wasn't the last play of the first quarter. So, so far. Literally, the one thing I didn't want to happen is coming through. Minnesota takes a 14-7 lead. The one thing I said I want to prevent. There's the first four stats, by the way. Keep our defense off the field. We do not want them to get tired early in the game and then come late in the game if we're in a close game. You know, they're not going to be playing at their top performance. We've had two turnovers now. And one of them resulted in a safety. It's not good. We need to keep the defense off the field. We need to keep that offense on the field and put points on the board. And down he goes. Jamin Davis went unblocked. Uh, the Lions are being the Panthers. That's... I don't know how to feel about that one. Because, uh, the Lions, I want them to win so they can get a better or a worse draft pick. Because they're already eliminated from the playoffs. And the Panthers are the one seed, so I don't know if I want the Panthers... I don't know if I want to risk playing the Panthers in the playoffs. If we happen to be the seven seed, they fall to the two seed. What the actual fuck is going on? Defense, get your get get back on the field, cause the offense had another turnover. Oh, 
like offense give our defense a break I don't know if you uh genuine question uh breaking out of the you know realism factor I don't know if you can view possession like I don't know if you can view how long the team had possession I know you can but like I want to see like how many offensive plays we had I swear, at the moment it's like 10 compared to their 25 or something. Third and inches. It's going to be a throw. Guard is wide open. And he missed him. That is huge. They're going to go for the field goal. The kicker is going to be playing. So, 21 yard attempt is good. <clears throat> Obviously, the kicker would play. I mean. That arm injury isn't going to affect his kicking, I'd imagine. So, we're only down to points. Our defense has played phenomenal so far, but that's not going to last. If I know, you know, how stamina works. Oh my god, I thought he fumbled. Alright, oh, you, I was really just talking about how you are so careful with the ball. And you, you threw a lousy interception. That's a good throw. Worst case scenario, that's incomplete, unless if you know, oh, unlucky bounce. That's out of your control. Uh, I don't agree with that play, though. Targeting their best corner. Third and three. Met just wide open. That's fine by me. Get the first down. That's what we saw with Homie last week. He takes long, methodical drives when he's careful with the ball. That's exactly what I want. I want to win in a low-scoring game. Whether it's, you know, Stem scoring zero points and we scored 10, or it's like a 14 to 13 type of game. You know, I can take a 21-7 lead. Huntley, what are you doing? That was a bad overthrow. Now let's put this in a long third down. Huntley. Throws. Complete to Komet who's going to get the first down. Let's go Komet. Had to jump up to catch that. So an unlikely play turned, you know, out to work out. So we're going to head to the achievement of warning down 8 to 7. And a very interesting 8 points they have. Comes off of a field goal, a safe, two field goals, and a safety. But that was a bad snap. Huntley going to throw. Once again, Komet having to jump for the ball. And we need a few more yards for field goal range. I do not trust Cairo Santos with a 59 yard attempt. And Montgomery dropped it. Oh no, what's the play? We're gonna send him out there. 59 yards. And well short. Woodley was like right down the middle but short. And we're probably gonna lose this game. Like I said, in a low scoring game is the issue though. Great tackle. Only allowing him to get one. Because we just can't get anything going on offense. I said I want long drives that end in points, not miss field goals that are near 60 yards. Someone tackle him. The Eagles are going to take a timeout with a minute one remaining there. First of the half at the 41 yard line. 58 yarder from this range for their kicker. And there was a blitz. Not a blitz. Well, maybe. That ends up incomplete. That now, who is 59 seconds left. Incomplete. Had a receiver wide open. AJ Brown. Sean Murphy Bunting's not doing too great so far, I'd say. Besides that first play interception. Third and ten. McDowell. 
Another screen pass is incomplete, just happened to throw it away, and they're going to attempt a 58-yarder. So can they kick from deep? They, they, uh, I don't know if he would have had the distance, but he was wide right anyway. Jake Elliott. So we're going to get the ball back in pretty solid field position. Oh, uh, I think that would have just made it. Huntley, with plenty of time, and he's going to scramble into the sack. Because that's super smart. Why'd you scramble? There was nothing there. You had a clean pocket. And you overthrow Komet, something you haven't done. Oh, deary me. Here we go again. We get the ball back, and we do nothing with it. So our defense is going to be even more tired. And you throw the fucking ball away. Come on offense, bro. Every single week. This punt is pretty good. Fair caught at the 13-yard line. They have 31 seconds and two timeouts. Washington currently beating Dallas 13-7. That's best-case scenario for us, probably. Is Dallas. Or no, worst-case scenario. We want... Dallas to win. Dallas has. I don't even know if we can beat Dallas. I don't know the tiebreaker in that, so. But we can beat Washington. And we have lost to Washington. That's going to do it for the half, but what a catch by Devontae Smith. There's the first half stats for those of you who are curious. How have we had six less snaps than them? I feel like they have dominated compared to us. And we're going to take a look around the league with the halftime report. First, we head to Minneapolis, where the Vikings lead 28-14. Kyle Meek, three touchdowns, one to Justin Jefferson, who already has over 100 yards. Aaron Rodgers with a touchdown and two interceptions. Touchdown going to Christian Watson. Next, we had the Houston, where the Jaguars lead 20 0 at the half. Orange, two touchdowns, interception. Mills with a touchdown. Zay Jones with a touchdown. And finally, we had the Charlotte, where the Panthers are losing 10 6 to the Lions. Ryans has a touchdown to Jamison Williams. And Matt Corral has nine, or 101 yards. And next gen stats here to uh, Eagles when it comes down to throwing the ball short. So we predicted what they were going to do, right? And here are the Bears when it comes down to throwing the ball short. Both teams similar game plans appears. That could be a good reason why it's an eight to seven game. Bears do receive second half kickoff. I actually thought the Eagles did, but I'm not complaining. Great collecting not to return it. That's smart. And we see Huntley out there having a great start to the game, but since then has really struggled with the receivers getting open. But someone who isn't a receiver, Montgomery, he gets 15 yards on that play in a first down. First and 10 out from the 40. It's going to be a handoff back to Montgomery. He's going to get four in the play. Six carries for 23 yards, just under four yards per carry. Huntley is going to throw now. Great block by Montgomery, but everyone else wasn't that great. So that's going to bring up third and 13 now from their own 37. Just checks it down to Montgomery, he makes one tackle or a miss, and he's going to fight to the 44, but well short of the first down. So, we had four offensive plays that drive. Gives the defense a break. Fair caught at the 13-yard line. I'm, good. I'm saying it so much, but this defense is out there majority of the game right now. And the offense is not helping. 
Jalen Johnson was on coverage, but it was complete to number 13, Alan Lazard. That was a first down to the 29, gain of 16. It's going to be a delayed draw and a lot of room. He's going to fight forward to the 44, and I think we're slowly watching our playoff hopes die because of the offense. This defense has played amazing. And as you can see, they're starting to struggle because you know what happened. We had a whole first half where we should have dominated, but the offense decided not to do anything. And that's not really anyone's fault. Off the back, that's out of bounds. And 4 and 4 from this field, this might be go for a third quarter. They're going to let the punt. Kick goes out of bounds at the 18. Good news is we're only down 8 point. All it takes is a field goal. And we're back in this game. We're not back in this game. We're in the lead. We've been in this game the whole time. It's been a very lackluster game for both parties. It's really just been a defensive battle, as you can see. Nice for the commit, makes it third and two, so third and very manageable, but with two yards. Interesting play call, and... Four for inches. If I'm the coach here, I'm very gutsy. I'm going for it, but fortunately, even though I am the coach, uh, doesn't give me that option. I really like that play call, though. In my opinion, this, especially this game, probably your best offensive player. Because, I mean, the cornerbacks have been locking up the receivers. Met has gone open almost every play. Montgomery has had a pretty solid game, but not up to Komet standards. Not Komet standards, like compared to Komet. And they got a huge gain. They're already up to the 49. Second and inches. And this is where it's really going to come down because they get really any more yards. They're going to probably get a field goal out of it. Huh. Now that I'm realizing, our offense has been horrible. The only points we have came off of an interception that we got at like our, the, the 30 yard line. You know, that makes sense that we got points when we got great field position because every other time we haven't done shit. And we yet have done shit. Homie's done amazing coming in as a filler, but ultimately I don't think he's going to be enough. I'm honestly considering putting Fields in because Fields was the reckless player who either got you yards or got you no yards. Huntley has really struggled with this game, not with anything, but just to move the ball. He's not having a bad game or anything. He's just not getting yards. And that, I think we might have to put Fields in and just, you know, let him throw the ball around, see how many yards he can get. Because we are not out of this game. We are far from it. But, um, what I like to call, uh, stamina is, uh, fatigue really coming into effect. As you can see, uh, our defense is not playing very well anymore because, well, they gave it their, their heart out the first two and a half quarters. And, well, simply seem out of juice. So I'm going to do the unthinkable, 
no matter how well he plays. And just to get any yards, we're going to put Fields in there. We're not committing to Fields at all. In fact, he could go freaking 10 for 10, 150, and two touchdowns. And we probably would still play Huntley because, well, at that point, the season's a lost cause anyway. We maybe have an under 1% chance of making the playoffs. We're down 8, though, so still a one-score game. And there he is. Being given one last opportunity in the clutch. Does he have what it takes to go down the field and put more points on the board? Because besides the first quarter, we have not done anything. That was a two-yard game by Montgomery. And I put Fields out there to throw the ball, not to run the ball. I feel like that's too predictable. And immediately Fields gets sacked. Okay. Who the fuck is Josh Wet? That's bad phrasing. I know uh, Josh Wet, I know who he is. He's a great defensive player. But what I meant to ask, who is guarding him? Because that's two and a half sacks so far. Rob Havenstein. Dude, why do we go out and invest in you if you're going to be an ass left or right tackle? We're, or we might just cut him too. We might just literally try and just reinvest. Start from scratch. It just seems our team is not quite ready to compete yet. And these big people we went out and spent free agency on have not been playing up the expectations. Granted, year one in a system. But we are how many weeks into this season? 16 weeks. And you have played like ass up until this point. I don't think I can, you know, be like, yeah, he's worth keeping a second season. Or... Because there could be better uh, right tackles out there. Whether that's in the draft, free agency, or even in the trade market. There's the fields I know and love. There he is. Making plays when it matters most. He just threw it up for Ridley, and Ridley went up and got it, and that puts us first and go up to one. And there's the other part of Fields. Throwing interceptions. That's 19 on the season. God damn it. We got to keep him in, though. That was the biggest spark in offense we've had so far. We just need the defense to have one more stop. Maybe two, you know. It, this is literally all on one, the defense and two Justin Fields. Third and three. And that right there might be the dagger. Jalen Johnson, why the fuck are you playing so far off? It's not technically the dagger, but man, we're going to have not a lot of time. About to say, they'd be stupid if they didn't throw the Gawker. He was wide open immediately. They have the first down. I don't know why they don't. This is a run. Easy. And he still gains a bunch of yards. And, well, we lasted 16 weeks, but in the end, it's just not enough. We still have a very small chance because we know we need a touchdown and two-point conversion. And we do have three timeouts, but it just doesn't seem like it's going to happen. We're going to probably get the ball back with like a minute 43, and we're going to need to go all the way down the field. I'm talking 95 yards probably. 
Uh, 82. 82 yards with no timeouts. Minute 45 with a playmaker like Fields. It's definitely going to be interesting. And the first fucking play, he got pressured. Come on, O-line. I've tried so hard to improve you, and yet here you are, in the biggest moment, struggling. We now need 70 yards, but we got the first down at least. And that's how we go out. That is how we go out. Now I remember why. Now, now I remember why. And we end up losing 22 to 14. But oh, there it goes. They're gone. This one stinks. Cause I, I was really confident in this team to begin the season. I mean, you look. First fucking game. Amazing. Second game. Even though we lost, there was so many... I don't care about the Bengals. Even though we lost, we barely lost. And it was because of a ton of mistakes. I was like, alright, if we just fix up those mistakes, we're going to be dominant. And then... It just didn't stop. We get three wins, makes me think, oh, we have a chance, and then, and then we're at this situation where we literally win and a lot of luck, and, well, we weren't able to get five wins. We were able to get five losses in a row, but five fucking wins is just out of our fucking capability. It sucks. It really does suck, but now that we're eliminated from the playoffs, um... Just to make sure, who is the 7th seed? 7th seed are the Falcons. And they only have 6 losses, right? Yeah, we're eliminated. Well, we're just going to sim this week then. And then we'll give you a week 18 finale, but... We're allowed to negotiate with whoever we want now. Mooney... You're going to take a lot of cap space, but I really want you. Mooney just doesn't want to come back. I like you back, Tyree Jackson, because, uh, alright, you're happy to return, so that's probably going to be where we stop. Just to magically see, would we even beat the Ravens? No, nah, so, it doesn't matter, we would have been eliminated anyway, we might as well upgrade some players. <clears throat> Who got the weekly award? Tower Huntley. All right. Well, that's gonna leave week eighteen. And Camus Gruyer Hill is also injured now. And we'll get Nicholas Morrow back. That's cool. We'll have we'll have him back for the. Who do we have to cut? Uh, 
Oh. Thanks for uh, signing back, Danny, but we don't need you anymore. So, let's, are the Falcons in the playoffs? Well, no. So, I mean, if we beat the Falcons, uh, we at least knock them out of the playoffs for good. And the Vikings are actually leading the division, so the Packers have crumbled uh, towards the end. So that's huge. But that's about going to do it. Um, what time are we at? 41 minutes. I feel bad because, you know, this isn't a long episode, but there is just, quite frankly, really nothing else to do. Okay, so this is where we are. Half pack, we don't need that. QB, we don't need that. Moses Graham. Another running back. Receiver, we might take. Trey Galloway. And Nick Wheeler. Steve Shepard, Nick Wheeler, and Galladay. Or Callaway something. Wheeler. We'll look at him first. I doubt we take him, but. Yeah. Receiver was like Galladay, Callaway. Yeah, we're not taking him. No left end, Steve Shepard. Well, we're not taking him either because I don't think we have a top five pick. When's the last mock draft? Or when was the last one? Okay, there's only been two so far. We were at two. We thought Doug. Actually, we can see what we're picking. I forgot. Uh, do 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 do. Is it, it's either in depth chart or roster. I know that. Okay, it's in. It's in, uh, roster. I always get these two confused. Draft picks. We currently have uh, the 10th overall pick. We have two seconds, 42 and 50. We got a third and then... We don't have we don't have a fourth or fifth. We got two six, one from Green Bay because uh, and we have two sevens because of Green Bay and New Orleans. I don't know what we do, or I don't remember what we did with New Orleans at least. But Green Bay was because of the Rasul Douglas trade, Cameron Sutton Rasul Douglas trade. So. Yeah, that's going to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I did. I will see you next time for the final game played in the 2023 season for the Chicago Bears. Uh, I recorded this on Saturday. It's going to go out Monday. Uh, the main reason I wanted to record this on Saturday. Uh, stretching outside of the game. Uh, but in real life. The Packers and Bears play, and I'm a I'm a Packers fan. Uh, and just honestly, if the Packers were to lose to the Bears, I probably would not have done Bears franchise. Uh, because you know I I would, but I'd just probably be too uh too devastated.
yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I did. See you next time for the season finale. And then after that, uh, that'll be Friday, which probably means Saturday will be, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know when the college football playoff starts. Because Ohio State's probably going to be in it, so I'll probably watch. Probably have one Saturday and the other Monday. And then, you know, the season free uh, game will be on, Mo not Monday, Friday. So, yeah. Goodbye.